started. Welcome everyone and thank you so much for joining another DevTest community webcast. Today we have a presentation on how to upgrade to DevTest 10.1 and some tips and tricks on getting that done. On the phone today we have Beverly Mindel who is a product manager and Kostu Bordy who is on the uh, SWAT team for the service virtualization product. So they're going to be giving the presentation today. If you have any questions as we're going through today's session, please feel free to put them into the Q&A box in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Uh, uh, we'll get to them when we have a pause, or we'll also open the line up for verbal questions at the end of today's session. So if you'd prefer to ask a, a question over the phone, you can hold on to them until the end, at which point we'll open up the line for any questions over the phone. All right, I'm now going to turn the call over to Beverly. Take it away, Beverly. Thank you, Melanie. Welcome, everyone. We're excited to have you here today uh, to talk about upgrading to DevTest 10.1 and what's available on that version. So that everyone's aware, this session is for the purpose for our clients and for our partners, um, and the content shouldn't be used for anything outside of that purpose. What we want to talk about today and is really the steps that are needed, that need to be taken in order to make you successful at using DevTest 10.1 so that, one, you're aware what's available, uh, what features you'll get, why you should upgrade. Uh, the second thing that we would like is for you to have all of the steps that you need ready to go so that you can successfully implement that upgrade. So you're aware of what you need to prepare ahead of time and what to do in order to make sure that upgrade is successful. We also want to make sure that you have the resources available in case you want to take a more in-depth look at any of the topics we discussed today or you have additional questions or help. Uh, that you're able to get that help that you need right away uh, or find the resources that you need that answer your questions. And of course, we're going to have a question and answer at the end. Um, and as Melanie said, if you have questions, feel free to type them in the chat box uh, or the question and answer box so that you can ask your questions in real time. Without further ado, we're going to jump right in and talk about why upgrade. So being on the latest version of our software um, allows you to have access to the newest functionality that's available in 10.1. We also know that older technology can be more expensive for organizations like yourself to maintain. We shared with you a list of what versions went end of service on the left. Um, and as you can see, a number of versions have gone end of service recently or will be coming up on the end of service very soon. And we want to make sure when you upgrade, you get access to our support experts. Um, and you're on a newer version, you're able to get faster resolution time to issues that you might have. Um, if you're on a version that's no longer supported, you don't have access to our great support experts um, if you have questions or need help or, or run into an issue. You also get access to the latest functionality that's available in DevTest 10.1. And my colleague Calstuff is going to share with you a little bit more about what that functionality is and what you can look forward to as you upgrade. So I'm going to pass it along to you, Calstuff. Sure. Uh, thanks, Beverly. Um, okay, so we'll get started. Um, as we saw on the previous slide, uh, if you are on any of the versions prior to 8.5, uh, the, the end of support uh, for that has already been reached. So if you look at the slide again, if you are on any version from 7x or 8.1, 8, 8.2, 8, 8.4, there's no support for those versions anymore. That's July 1st was the end of support for uh, versions till 8.4. And the third line there says 8.5 and version 9.0, the end of support, end of service, is 15th October. Now that's uh, one and a half months from today. So the, the reason why we're having this webinar is for you to understand what new features have gone into the product, uh, starting from 8.0, and you know how it would help you in your uh, implementation of service virtualization as well as making sure that you're making use of all the uh, latest uh, features that we've put in the product. Right, so what I'll do is I'll go over the tips and tricks 
on upgrading. Of course, the understanding here is that every implementation of service virtualization is different and unique. So you might have a few things uh, here and there that might be specific to your implementation. And again, uh, that's the whole purpose of having this, um, this webinar, where you could listen to the basic uh, tips and tricks on upgrading or migrating to the latest version. And also, we'll provide you with the resources that you could use, you could contact us, you could look at the Upgrade Center. We have all those things, all those resources for you as we move along this presentation. So the first thing um, on this slide I'd like to present is uh, we have the new, all the new features that have gone into the product, the marketing features uh, that we have. Right? The first one is a dev test portal UI. Uh, previously, uh, we just had the workstation. Uh, to create uh, virtual services and to create tests, to run tests and to run virtual services. And then we also had the dev test console for reporting. And uh, inside the dev test console, we had the server console, right, which ran a 1505. So as of version 9x, uh, we, there is no support for the dev test console and the server console, and that was replaced by the dev test portal. So the dev test portal basically enables you to create, edit, deploy uh, virtual services. There's also a reporting console in there, and this is all based on the new uh, AngularJS technology. Right? So that's where that's how the uh, new portal is built. There's also ACL administration. There's also the CVS dashboard. So everything that was in the uh, dev test console was ported over to the dev test portal. Um, so it's a new slick UI. Uh, the next one is uh, the dev test portal. We are using new enhanced APIs, uh, which allow us to create virtual services faster than it was before. There's enhanced Swagger 2.0 support, uh, which, uh, which enables you to use your Swagger doc or Swagger spec and uh, create tests and app tests, as well as create virtual services. And uh, also we support internal and external references as well. We have uh, improved, we've had the CRCS support for a couple of uh, releases. Uh, we've made some improvements to that support uh, for CRCS and also to create some baseline tests based on that. Um, a couple of other things, we added the integration with uh, CAPDM, which is the test data manager. Uh, that was added a few releases back, as well as uh, the Agile Central and the HP ALM plugin always existed, but since uh, HP changed uh, from Quality Center to ALM, we had the under APIs change. We had to change our plugin to make it more robust so that it supports the uh, latest version of the uh, ALM product. Right. Uh, another thing is, as I mentioned, the TDM. Uh, which enables you to uh, send request response pairs and create a virtual service on the on service virtualization side. Right, so all your test data can be moved uh, and pumped into the virtual service. The Agile Central uh, integration allows you to tag your tests, and whenever your test runs, um, the application test, the PSD run, when you run those, uh, the results of those are stored in Agile Central, formerly known as Rally. And the final one here on the slide is the support for Docker. The Docker support was added around version 8.3, where uh, out of the box, of course, this is on Unix. Um, we provide you with images for uh, various images for a VSP, registry, dashboard uh, that you can take and uh, run those, create containers, Docker containers, use them whenever you need to. Let's say the scenario there could be you want to do some testing on a VSC. You just bring up a VSC container, do your testing against that, and once you uh, once you're done, you can just shut it down. Right, just like a churn, use and then throw away your churn and burn. So that uh, many of our customers are making use of the Docker feature, the Docker support that we had added previously in 8.3. And if you look at the communities. Um, we have a lot of threads going around uh, regarding Docker. People have posted questions, and many of, many of those have been answered. And again, 
if you have not looked at uh, Docker, please feel free to do so. Okay, so looking at um, so uh, since you all of you are users and implementers of service virtualization, uh, you probably know about our uh, public site for uh, documentation. It is called docops, d o c o p s dot uh, ca dot com, and once you go there, you have access to each and every uh, version documentation. So on this screen, we are showing releases from 10.1. Uh, to release 8.5 because those are the supported versions as of today. And then every uh, doc every documentation for every version has a section called as release notes. And inside the release notes, it tells you all the new features that were added as a part of that release, any features that was deprecated, uh, any updates or any issues that were fixed, all that information is in the release notes. So that's a great resource to look at if you have any questions or if you have any doubts to check if, you know, if this feature was added or whether what was exactly done, was the feature fixed or you know, any of those things. So release notes is a great resource. In case you have not looked at it, uh, please uh, do that. Thank you, Kapsev. And, and one of my favorite parts of the release notes is that you can do that comparison across all the different versions. So if you are not on kind of 10.0 and you want to see what's changed not just from 10.0 to 10.1, but from whatever version you're on um, to 10.1, you, know, you can see kind of across multiple versions uh, what has changed, uh, giving you a better idea of all of the new functionality that you'll have access to uh, when you start on a given version. So now that we have a more in-depth look of some of the functionality you can expect to see on 10.1, uh, we want to talk about how do you get there? So what do you need to do in order to successfully upgrade your environment? I'm going to take you through some of those must-do items that you should do to prepare, and then I'll pass it along to my colleague, Calstead, who will take us more in-depth into um, some of the best practices that we recommend and how do you upgrade and then verify that your upgrade is successful. So when we look at some of the things that you must do, there's a couple of preparation items that we strongly recommend. In fact, we, we recommend that you have to do this uh, in order to have a successful upgrade experience. Uh, the first that we recommend is you should back up your environment, and we'll talk about what that means in a little bit. Uh, you should also prepare for any database migration that may occur. And then you should also know your environment, know what you're going to be upgrading to and the details around your environment. So when we look at what does it mean to back up your environment, we're talking about, first of all, uh, backing up your dev test directory and all of your assets. And your assets include any virtual services or tests um, that you are using within uh, service virtualization. We're also talking about backing up your databases. So this will include your registry uh, and your enterprise dashboard. Now, if you are on 7.5 or earlier, you should make sure that after you've done any sort of backup, you should uninstall your enterprise dashboard. Uh, if you're on 8.0 or later, you don't need to do that step. You just need to have a backup. But again, if you are on 7.5, uh, please make sure that after you've done your backup, you also uninstall your enterprise dashboard. And that is a needed step in order to successfully upgrade to 10.1. In terms of preparing for your database migration, uh, we recommend that you go and look in your configuration files and update uh, the credentials to make sure that the user for the database has full database administrative access. Oftentimes, when you first, after you've done the initial install with a full DBA, users will go ahead and change the, the credentials for the user so that they don't have full DBA privileges anymore. Uh, and, and that is quite common. So we recommend, again, before you start the upgrade process, take a look at your configuration files and make sure that the user is authorized to have full database administrative rights. 
uh, because it may require a uh, schema change in terms of the database, and we want to make sure that we're able to successfully handle it and that user has the right to be able to do that. And then, of course, you should know your environment, so uh, know the information around um, the hardware that you're planning on using. Uh, if you have any certificates um, that you need to handle, have all of that information handy, uh, any authentication or LDAP requirements. Uh, make sure that you have all of that information as well. And again, we talked about some of the database um, information that you'll need, uh, but just make sure that that's on hand as well. So we just want to make sure that you kind of prepare for that information ahead of time uh, before you begin the upgrade process. And Tasked up, I'm going to pass this along to you to go over some of the best practices and next steps. Sure, thanks. Okay, so let's get into the actual <clears throat> best practices for upgrading. Um, so as, uh, as is the right practice, uh, before upgrading your domain environment, uh, always make sure that you have a sandbox environment. And most, most of our customers do have a sandbox environment which they uh, upgrade and make sure that the path to upgrade and everything works fine as expected, right? Because this is a low risk environment. If you have any issues or if you run into any issues as a part of that sandbox environment upgrade, you can always reach out to us. You can always reach out to CS support and get your queries answered. And if there are any issues, we, we don't uh, foresee any issues with the upgrade because we test it many times. But again, if there are any minor issues, we should be able to help you out with that. Right, just to make sure that the upgrade goes on well and smoothly. Right? And also that enables you after the upgrade, once the upgrade goes through, to make sure that you're, uh, in case you're using the test, uh, that your tests run as expected as previously, as, as well as the virtual services are being deployed uh, correctly and the virtual services respond in the correct fashion. And more importantly, the new features that were added as a part of the uh, release, you are able to go through and play around with those features and decide if you would like to use those features uh, after you upgrade your main environment. And um, two ways to upgrade to the latest version. The first is in place, so wherever you have your existing uh, install, Whatever version you have, you might still have a 7x version, you might have an 8x or a 9x version. Uh, if you just run the installer on top of it, the, the new installer on top of it, it, it would just make sure that it, would, it copies all the relevant new files there and updates any properties files that it needs to and goes to the install and does an in-place upgrade. Uh, the second option is new location. There might be uh, scenarios where you would not want to uh, do an in-place upgrade, and maybe it's a new box that you want to install um, service virtualization on, right? Then that's a new installation, and then you would copy your assets from uh, one version to the other. That could be the scenario, right? So those two ways. Uh, a couple of pointers about the enterprise dashboard. Uh, so. Prior to 9.5, the, uh, the dashboard configuration was in the local dot properties. That's where you configured your, uh, where the uh, dashboard is, as well as the database connections for the dashboard. After 9x onwards, we've moved uh, the, all those properties to a file called as Dradis dot properties. Uh, Dradis is an internal uh, code name for the dashboard, uh, hence the name Dradis the properties, and that contains the database information. As you probably already know, that um, the dashboard uses a separate database schema than the registry database. The recommendation is to not uh, to have these database schemas separate and not keep them together. The obvious reason being, you know, we want to keep the registry database separate from the dashboard database. And uh, so one uh, interesting pointer here is that if you're doing an in-place upgrade, the installer detects that, uh, and if the installer detects that you're on a prior version of the dashboard, it takes all your relevant information from the local dot properties file related to the dashboard and copies it to the Jadis.properties file. So at least that creates the base for you 
And again, as a best practice, you can go into the register properties file and verify, make sure that all the properties are database configuration and the location, the port that the dashboard is using is correct. Thanks. Those are some tips on the dashboard. Okay, steps to upgrading. Now, uh, the first and the most important thing is you need an installer, which you have access to that on the, from the CA support site. Uh, the next one is the license key. So when you're upgrading to 10.1 version, which is the latest version, and which is the version that we recommend you to move to, uh, uh, most probably you would have to reach out to support. Just take a look at your license file, that test lic.xml, and uh, that's the, the dev test home or Lisa home folder. Right? Take a look at that, and when you right click and open it, if there is an entry for 10.0 10 or 10.1 or 10.x, you should be good, the installation should work fine. If not, uh, please reach out to uh, the licensing team and they should be able to provide you the new license file. So once you have that, make sure that you shut down all the services and applications that are using service virtualization, uh, run the installer, um, depending on if you're doing an in-place upgrade or in a new location, just run the installer. And once that's done, configure the properties files, go to the local.properties if you need to make any changes, which you should not, uh, which there's no need to make any changes unless uh, you want to make any changes to the new version, otherwise all your uh, previous um, configurations will work. Now again, if this is a new uh, in, uh, a new location installation, so let's say you decided to install it on new box, of course you have to move your local dot properties, your site dot properties. If there was register properties, all those properties files as well as VM options files, um, in addition to all the assets, right, moving your uh, virtual services, your tests, and all those assets you'd have to move from the project folder or move the project folder um, to the new location. You'd also have to move the VST deploy folder, which contains all your virtual services, right? Um, and starting with version 8X, uh, ACLs are mandatory. Uh, prior to that, there was an option where you could turn on or turn off the um, ACLs. Moving forward with 8X, um, happened a couple of years back, uh, the ACL is a must. And to get more information on the ACL, you can look at the doc ops site. Uh, let's say, so this is, let's say you upgrade this in, uh, you upgrade, upgrade your registry box. In case you have a remote components, and which many of our customers do, let's say you have a remote simulator, you have a remote VSP or multiple uh, components, uh, the ask is you go to those boxes and upgrade those components. And as long as your previous configuration was good, after, even after the upgrade, once you bring up that component, no need to bring up the registry. There's no registry on that box, right? So uh, as long as you bring up that component, it should be able to connect to the registry and show up in the AWS dashboard as being connected. Right? And of course, all that. After. And then, once you're done with all these, you would start off the sequence that you do. Right? Uh, the enterprise dashboard is the first. The registry will not start if the dashboard is not running. And again, this could be single implementation on a box. It could be remote um, on remote boxes. But the first thing to start is uh, the dashboard. Once the dashboard comes up, then you start the registry. And then you can start the portal, the VSC coordinator simulator, depending on what you're using. Right? If you're not using any a test from application test, you might not choose to start the coordinator and simulator. Uh, and if you're only using virtual services, then you would start the, um, the VSC. Right. Okay, post installation, a few checks. Uh, first, verify that the dashboard, enterprise dashboard connectivity is there. So you go to 1506 port and make sure that the dashboard comes up. Right. Once the dashboard comes up, the next thing to verify is the registry connectivity. Right. Uh, once you start the registry, the dashboard should show a line, an entry for the registry, saying it's up and running. Right. Once that's done, you would start the um, the other components. Uh, you would start the VSC as required, the simulator coordinator, and all those would show up as started, and the account would be if, if you have all of these components. With, one component everywhere that count 
in the dashboard what we want from the simulator, the coordinator, the PSP. Right? Then you start the portal, uh, make sure you are able to log into the portal as at port 1507, uh, bring up uh, the workstation connectivity, deploy a couple of virtual services, run some tests, and make sure that the tests and the virtual services are functioning in a way that they were work working with. Thank you, Kasta. I'm going to talk about next some of the resources that are available. So if there are any topics here that you want to have a deeper dive on, or if you have any questions as you're preparing for your upgrade or need help, uh, I want to be able to show you where you can find these, where you can go. So we talked a number of times about opportunities and more details where you could find information in our documentation, whether that was information about how to upgrade, whether that was information on ACL, which is now mandatory. Uh, you can go to our documentation site and get that information um, and kind of search that as well. If there's any other topics or, or things that you're interested in learning about, um, you can discover that as well and, and the steps on, uh, you know, how to do that from our documentation. We also have a community upgrade center. One of the things that I love about this center is it links to a lot of different resources that are available. So it breaks things down on, you know, why you should upgrade, uh, preparing yourself for the upgrade, and what you should do post-upgrade. Uh, it links to our documentation uh, that we've been discussing. Um, it links to other community posts that may uh, provide you with guides on how to prepare and do the upgrade. Uh, this is a great resource that allows you to get information across uh, the process of preparing for your upgrade. And if you use it and you have any feedback, we'd love to hear from you on the community. Uh, but this is a wonderful resource that just sort of combines all the resources that are available for you um, related to the upgrade process in one location. We also have um, YouTube videos on the installation and configuration process. And the configuration process for install is very similar to the configuration process for upgrading, especially uh, if you aren't doing that in-place upgrade um, for if you're not doing that in-place upgrade and you actually need to either copy over your configuration files or update any information in your configuration files. And what's nice about the videos is they're broken up into chunks so that you can pick a specific topic. Oh, I'm only interested uh, in upgrading or updating my database administrative um, information in, in the configuration files. Let me watch just a you know, five-minute video on that rather than watching the whole process. So uh, it's a great resource, especially if you want to see what it looks like when someone actually does these steps and what steps they do. And then if you still need help, um, we want to make sure that that's available. So one of the things that we've done is we started a community conversation specifically around upgrading. And so, we want you to join that conversation. So if you need help from the experts, you can post there in that discussion chain um, and share with us what's going on with your upgrade experience or any questions that you might have as you're preparing for it. Another thing we want to hear about is, you know, maybe you've already done your upgrade and you have some feedback for us on your experience. Please join the community conversation. We want to hear from you. We want to know what your experience was. Um, and we want to make sure that if you have questions or as you prepare um, or as you complete your upgrades, that you get the resources that are available to you, so please join that conversation. You're also welcome to contact your, uh, the CA support team for help or uh, technical assistance um, if you have any questions or issues um, with the upgrades. Uh, your account rep will also want to hear from you to hear about your experience, so if you have anything that you want to reach out to, you're welcome to contact your CA account rep as well. And then Calstub has shared his contact information. 
Um, and so you can also follow up with CalSTAD uh, if you need any help or have any additional questions. So I want to take a moment to summarize what we discussed today and, and what our goals were. Um, by the end of this webinar, we, we want you to understand what is available in 10.1, uh, what are the features uh, that you'll have access to. Uh, we also want to make sure that you're able to successfully prepare for your upgrade and you have the steps in order to successfully perform uh, and be able to verify that you've successfully upgraded. And of course, we want to make sure that if you do need assistance throughout the way, that you have uh, the knowledge of where to go to get the support that you need uh, to answer the questions that you have uh, or to reach out to, to CA um, if there's anything that you need that's not available or um, you just want to be able to reach out to someone, who could that be? Um, we want to make sure you have that information as well. And so we want to take some time to answer questions uh, that you might have. Um, there may be some, I, I'm not sure if there's some more questions in the chat. Um, I know that Melanie is also going to have an opportunity for you to ask questions as well. Um, but at this point, we'd love to hear from you and, and answer any questions you might have as you prepare for this process or as you prepare to use uh, the newest version of DevTest. Thanks, Beverly. Just a reminder, if you have any questions, you can enter them into the Q&A box. That's at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Uh, we do have a question or two in there. I'm also going to let you guys know how to open up for the phone line. If you'd like to ask a question over the phone, you can do so at this point. You can click pound six on your telephone keypad to unmute yourself and just go ahead and chime in at any time. Okay, uh, we do have one question in the Q&A box that hasn't been answered yet from Ivan. Are we going to have upgrade support or will we have to have a support license to get upgrade support? Yeah, so um, I'm not sure what the current scenario is. Generally, you should be able to just reach out to me. Uh, I'll send you the, my email address. Uh, just reach out to me and we can take a look at that. The, uh, I'm not sure if you have uh, the maintenance contract with CA or what the scenario is, but uh, I'll definitely be interested in uh, assisting you on this. Okay, thank you, Kastu. Uh We have another question in from Uday. <clears throat> is there any cost involved in upgrading from 9.1 to the latest version? <clears throat> The answer is a no. There's no cost involved. Okay. At least from the CA side. And so if you have that active support and maintenance contract, um, you, you should be able to log in and download the installer and upgrade. Um, there shouldn't be a cost associated um, if you're in an active maintenance agreement. Now, one thing to remember is um, a few versions back, we have stopped supporting Windows 2008, right? So if that is the uh, OS that you're still using, and we've seen this at a few customers, uh, customer sites where, you know, they were using 2008, but that's not on the supported uh, matrix, uh, not on the supported platform matrix. So then they had to upgrade to Windows 2012, so there might be a cost on uh, your site to get that infrastructure. But other than that, I think we should be okay uh, from the CSI. side. Okay, any other questions, guys? Just a reminder, you can put them into the Q&A box or at this point also ask them over the phone by clicking pound six on your telephone keypad. We'll give it just a second in case anyone else has any questions. Oh, we got some positive feedback on the session. Thank you. <laughs> okay, um, so let me just make sure there's no other questions. 
Um, oh, one more from Zhang Zhe. Uh, are we going to provide any kind of deployment architecture diagram for 10.1? Uh, no, this, this depends on. Uh, see, we don't have uh, we don't provide the architecture diagrams because uh, you know it depends on what you're using it for and how many uh, registries you're using, how many VSCs you're using. We have a generic uh, architecture diagram on the DocOps site that you can take a look at as to how the registry VSCs, coordinated simulators, how those connect to each other, and what their role is. But the, whatever you're using, or if you're using 9x, the, everything should be the same. We've not added any new components. You know, whatever we had, are the same. We've added new features, but at least on from the deployment perspective, uh, that's still the same. You know, the number of uh, processes we had in 9x are the same as uh, the number of processes we have in 10.1. So, for so generic diagrams, please take a look at the doc off site. Great, thank you. Um, another question is from Uday. Yes, we will be um, sharing the recording from today's session on the communities later today. Keep an eye out for that. Um, we post a webcast recap to the dev test community with um, the recording, any relevant links, and any other information. We'll also post the Q&A transcript and all of that. I'll also send an email out to everyone who joined today with a link to that so you guys can easily access it. Yeah, Melanie, thanks for the information. This is JJ. Uh, I asked about the deployment architecture diagram for the 10.1. Sure. I, uh, yeah, I asked this question because of the, in 10.1, actually, it is different from the 9.x environment or the any previous environment because of the in 10.1, 10.x, the you guys including the portal as the default in the dev test, right? In previous version, we, uh, can select the portal to use it or not, right? It was based on the our requirements. The, we have the decision maker. Actually, we are the decision maker to use the portal. But the intent that one, the portal is the default. To use the intent that one, we need to install the portal service, right? And then portal is the key component to operate the dev test environment. So the portal That's correct. to use yeah to use the portal the actually the uh, portals the requirement which is the different with the other services something like the registry service simulator coordinator PSE those have the, the minimum requirement to run uh, those services the to run the portal service my understanding is it requires the uh, large portion of the hardware right it used the 8 gig RAM or the two CPU, three CPUs by itself. So that is the reason why the, if we are not running the portal service in the previous version, what would be the deployment architecture, including the portal service in 10.1? Right, so so okay, so, uh, so I hear you. So in the previous versions, you were not using the portal, and now you have to use it, right? So, so the way it works is uh, we've moved the reporting, the CVS uh, and the ACLs, all that from the prior console to this console, right? So, it's, uh, so what we're looking for is deployment architecture. So, it's, so you would start portal as a service, which you did not start before. So you would have to start that, and if you're not using the, the create functionality of virtual services, then you would only use it for reporting and for ACL administration and maybe to, uh, to run some virtual services or run some tests, right? So okay. the key is to bring up the portal and, uh, you know, since that's some of the functionality that I just mentioned is in the portal, you'd have to use it from there. So are you looking okay. for uh, what are you looking for? That that so does that answer your question or? Yeah, because of the in uh, because as far as I know, you guys are specifically using the workstation heavily. Yes. So the the portal you are talking about the uh, portal uh, service in 10.1 environment 
is minimized, and then the border requirement is not the same uh, with the previous version. Is that correct? Are we talking about the same border? The yeah, 1507 border? For, yeah, yeah, for example, the, in 9.1, they have passed to run the border service. We have to have the minimum the 8 gig uh, memory. And then uh, 3 or 4 CPU are located for the border service. But in the 10.1, what would be the requirement to run the border service? I see. So, um, so that requirement, again, most of the time, 99% of the time, we've seen the portal running on the same box as the registry, right? So if you have, uh, you know, there is a way to separate those, but again, most of the time, the recommendation is to have the registry, uh, have the portal on the registry box, right? So if you okay. have, so of course, you're not going to use a 4GB machine for the registry because, you know, that's your, uh, that's the heart of the installation. Um, I'm assuming most of our customers have 8GB plus, right, at least for the registry, and then you would have distributed components. So, again, if you're running everything on one box, you need, the 8GB is not going to help you, right? If you're using a VSP, if you're using uh, a registry, if you're using on a portal, then definitely you would need uh, more hardware, right, in terms of more con right. uh, enhanced uh, configuration. Yeah, that's the reason why I'm asking for the deployment architecture, what would be the difference? Because of the, we have to add the portal service into the existing registry server, right? Or we mm -hmm. can separately run the, the portal service from the different server, so that we don't know what would be the benefit in each scenario, the separating out the portal service, or we can run the, the uh, portal service on the same registry server, in that case, maybe we take out the PSC service or simulator coordinator services to the different server. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what we could do uh, is, is we could take this offline. I'll have uh, uh, Surya reach out to you, and we could continue okay. the discussion. Does it work for you? Okay, sounds good. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Okay, uh, we had one more question in the Q&A queue. Um, is CA going to support the 9.1 version until the end of the license? Hmm, that's a good question. So, <laughs> so uh, the way it works is you would, uh, ideally it's supported till the, the end of service is up, right? So looking at this, the end of service for 9.1, is, uh, what is it, in July, is it, uh, Beverly, is it July 20th next year? Okay, so February 4th. Yeah, so, I have it. Yeah, yeah. So, so till July, uh, till, till February 1st, as it shows on the screen, is when we'll support uh, 9-1. Even though you might have the license for a few months after that, you know, the support for the feature stops at, uh, on February 1st. And that's why, you know, if this is a good time, if you are on line one, uh, or that it's a good time to start thinking about the upgrade and plan for the upgrade, we are here to help you in any way that uh, you require us to help you out. Great, thanks, Costume. Okay. I think that's it for questions, so I think we'll close up for today. Um, thank you so much, Beverly and Costube, for a great presentation today. Thank you, everyone, so much for joining. We do have a short survey that's going to pop up when I close out the WebEx today. If you could please take a second and answer the questions. I think it's only uh, four or five questions, super quick. Uh, we just want to get your feedback on the session today, see where you're at in your dev test journey, and get some feedback from the customers that way. We'd really appreciate it. Um, we do have a few more roadmap sessions for SV coming up in September. Those will be posted to the community shortly, so keep an eye on the dev test community for that. I'll be sending around the recording later today if you guys would like to view that along with the Q&A transcript and any relevant links. And that's it. So thank you everyone so much for joining, and I hope everyone has a great day.